in this week's Letter from London, I'm joined by a legendary Hollywood actress making her return to the small screen. A new ring. That's... And if you're new to the show, here's a clip. I'm working on this new case. A missing scientist. Found on the edge of the villages. Frozen solid. What do you want? It's been six years. Why are you here? Because you both know what really happened. I really need my help. The stars join me here in London ahead of the show's grand finale, which is this Sunday. Jodie Foster, Kelly Reese, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. What attracted you about True Detective in this particular series? Issa Lopez, the director, just did such a magnificent job writing all the episodes and creating this world um, with the two True Detectives that are female now. You know, we, we remember season one and, and Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson, but there's something really extraordinary about the anthology and being able to say we're going we're gonna to do something completely different. So since Jodie brought up season one, was it the female-led character of this one that attracted you to it? And it's your first major on screen, right? Yes, it's my first major on screen. It's my, only my third acting job as well. You are part Cape Verdean, part Native American. Was that also an attractive, you know, calling point for you? Absolutely, because the representation or lack thereof that we have as indigenous people is just, you know, it's getting a lot better and I'm, we're just in such a great time. So when I had the, when it was presented to me, this character, Navarro, was in Nupiak and Dominican. She was part of two different worlds, part of the community that she was going to be policing. It was something that was so familiar to me because it's kind of the, that balance that you have to have. You don't feel enough for either. So it just attracted me to this very layered character. Jodie Foster, Kelly was a boxing champ, yes. and she said, though, that... Still is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and will maybe go back to boxing? I'm not retired yet. Okay. <laughs> um, and said that working with you was like training with Mike Tyson. Oh, yes, it was. without the biting. <laughs> she still got your ear. Yeah. Uh. Well, she didn't bite any ears off. No, it was like, it was like training with Mike Tyson in, like, 86 in his prime. And, and Jodie, you know, you are obviously a mentor of, of sorts, I guess, for all the newcomers and younger actresses. You decided that you wanted your character, uh, Liz Danvers, to be aged up. Well, my age, yes. Your age. <laughs> yes. But putting right. Navarro's story as the center. Yeah. Is that right? I, yeah, and I think Issa probably wanted that too, but it was something that I, I really wanted to remind us, that we, we were doing something that, that really ha isn't done very much, just to have the central voice of the film be an indigenous voice, mm -hmm. uh, to be look through those eyes in a way, uh, not just because we're doing representation, but because we really want to be in that body and really understand it from that perspective. And so for do, to do that, I'm just here to support. So I kind of reverse engineered my character of Liz Danvers uh, to support Kaylee's character's journey. Uh, that um, doesn't happen often. Well, you know, there's a funny thing that happens when you turn 60, I think, is, um, at least for me, I feel like there's like some weird chemical that starts going off in your body and um, you just don't care. Uh, and part of that not caring is that you suddenly realize that um, it's so much more fun and more satisfying to recognize that it's not your time, it's someone else's time. So the last major thriller detective that you played got an Oscar, Clarice, etc. Congratulations, because you're nominated again. Yes. In this case, Best Supporting Actress, yes. right? For Nyad. Yes. Tell me the story, everybody should know it. Ah, right? well, it's the story of Diana Nyad, who is a swimmer, had been a marathon swimmer uh, for all her whole life, and then came back at the age of 60, finally accomplishing her mission at 64, to swim from Cuba to Florida. Annette Benning and yourself, again, kind of aged up. I mean, you yeah. were not shy yeah. about yeah. the sun damage yeah. and the mask damage that she had, you know, yeah, the poor lips. Annette. Oh my yeah. gosh. I mean, that takes some courage also to Yeah, appear as I on say, like I was that. I was best supporting abs because <laughs> I just I never had to get in the water. I basically just stood on the boat and sucked in my stomach and my jogger bra, and that was pretty much all I had to do. There's the whole taxi driver kind of cast oh, yeah. group that's all meeting at the Oscars, right? By the time you did that film, I think you were... You, 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 I was 12 years old. You were old, 12, yeah. and you had more experience in film <laughs> yes. than either Martin Scorsese or Robert De Niro. Yes, I had, I had made more movies than either one of them at that point. But um, it's, it is funny to see... I mean, of course, I have so much respect for Scorsese and De Niro and 
all of the movies that they've made. Um, but yeah, my reference for them is, is very different. You know, Martin Scorsese had a little funny mask, mustache and he was really young and his mother was on set the whole time. And she was always on like- taxi driver. Yes, and she was tucking in his shirt all the time and she was like patting his butt. And not making sure you were okay. <laughs> yeah. So I do have a, a different memory of that. I think his butt, that's yeah. really good. And um, just because Killers of the Flower Moon is another amazingly timely film, in terms of diversity and representation of indigenous people. Did you like the film? You know, there's mixed feelings mm -hmm. about the film. Um, they're, not, they're not anything negative. I am so proud of Lily Gladstone and the entire indigenous yeah, yeah. cast and the entire uh, Osage Nation. She did a wonderful job, so did the whole cast. So I think having an ally like Martin Scorsese who took his platform and told this story and worked with them, it's an amazing opportunity just to continue to go forward. Jodie Foster, Kaylee Reese, thank you so much indeed. Thank you.